Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Rehab Science Podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Tom Walters. In today's short episode, we will be looking at the different types of pain. This is a really important area for you to learn more about when you are going to physical therapy and coming going to rehab. When someone comes in to see me, this is really one of the first things I'm thinking about. What type of pain do they have? This helps to kind of set up the treatment plan. So if you are having pain right now, figuring out you know, a lot of times people are just concerned about what structure, what issue, what area of my body is causing the pain. But before that, we want to know what type of pain is it. And there's really three sort of broad categories of pain that we will break things down into uh, in physical therapy. The first primary category of pain is the one that most people are going to experience. Uh, It's the one we see most often when someone comes into physical therapy. This is called mechanical or nociceptive pain. Essentially, this is the type of pain that's most associated with the tissues of your body, all the tissues that aren't nerves. So things like tendons, ligaments, connective tissue, muscles. So we could think about muscle strains, tendonitis type issues, uh, ligament sprains, like say you sprain your ankle. These all fall into this category of mechanical or nociceptive. So they're the most mechanical in nature. Oftentimes there is some sort of mechanical injury, like I said, like an ankle sprain. Maybe you are sprinting and you strain your hamstrings. Uh, There's going to be something that usually people can recall that triggered the onset of the pain. Sometimes it isn't. Sometimes maybe someone just wakes up and their neck hurts and that may still fall into a mechanical pain. And I'll explain more. There are certain characteristics you'd look for to be able to decide, is this truly a mechanical pain? The other word that I said uh, is nociceptive. That means that it's a type of pain that comes from the activation of the nociceptors in our body, which are receptors in our tissue that essentially detect danger. So when those nociceptors turn on, it can create nociceptive pain. The thing that you'll notice with mechanical pain when you're thinking about different symptoms and characteristics, trying to figure out, is this what I have? Mechanical pain is very mechanical in nature, which means that it has very obvious, clear sort of on-off type triggers, whether that's positions or activities. So if we go back to the ankle sprain example again, not only will you notice a clear, oftentimes a clear injury, you know, you're playing basketball the day before you sprain your ankle and now my ankle hurts, it makes sense. You can find a uh, mechanical issue that triggered the event, but then you'll also notice that the pain is reproduced easily with mechanical uh, triggers. So that would usually be a particular position or a particular movement or activity. So if somebody has an ankle sprain, say they inverted, they turned their ankle in, sprained the uh, ligaments on the outside of their ankle. When they put their ankle back in that position, they turn their ankle in, it will reproduce the pain. And then when they come out of that position, the pain goes away. So it has very clear on-off type triggers. If you have something, again, like a muscle or tendon injury, anything that puts stress on that muscle and tendon unit will usually reproduce the symptoms. So maybe a good one would be something like Achilles tendonitis. So if you have Achilles tendonitis, if you, you know, maybe are jumping, uh, running, even just doing a calf raise, any of these things that are making the calf muscles contract, which then puts stress on the Achilles tendon, that will tend to trigger the person's symptoms. So when someone comes into physical therapy, Again, I'm going through and looking at trying to figure out what type of pain does the person have. Most people will have this mechanical or nociceptive pain. If they're saying, hey, I had an injury and I notice that when I get into this position or perform this activity, it triggers my symptoms. And when I stop doing those things, the pain goes away. That starts pointing down this road of, oh, this is probably more of a mechanical pain you know, mechanical pains are also nice in that usually you can touch them, you can palpate the area. We do this a lot in physical therapy and our testing will palpate to see if we can reproduce the symptoms. So a musculoskeletal tissue that's mechanically sensitive, usually you can palpate it and it will reproduce the person's symptoms. Other things is that the pain will be very localized to where the tissue is irritated or injured. So Again, something like an Achilles tendonitis, if you go, the person will say the pain is right there on their Achilles tendon. It's not covering a big, broad region. It's very specific, and it's really localized to where the issue is. So those are some of the main characteristics of uh, mechanical or nociceptive pain. Usually this type of pain 
hasn't been around for a long period of time either. It's If you look at time frame, this can be helpful in terms of categorizing your pain. So mechanical pains will typically have only been around for maybe three or four months. They're fairly recent. They usually don't go past six months. And the reason for that is most musculoskeletal tissues heal within six months. There are some that can last longer. Sometimes things just get flared up. You might have a tendonitis and I've had some like this that have lasted eight months to a year because I kept flaring them up. So they were still a mechanical pain. They weren't a chronic pain. It was just that I kept flaring them up. So outside of mechanical or nociceptive pain, the next category is neuropathic, or you can think of it as nerve pain. These are basically mechanical, oftentimes mechanical irritations of nerves. So you might think of something like sciatica or carpal tunnel syndrome. Those are probably two of the biggest that most people are going to encounter. But it's a pain that's associated with the irritation of a nerve. And these will typically create symptoms like ning, uh, tingling, numbness. Uh, you could just have pain. Usually the pain, if, it, uh, if, if pain is the primary symptom, it will travel. And that's where it's different than a purely non-neural, non-nerve mechanical tissue. Nerve pain will travel down the path of that nerve. So if you think about sciatica, sciatica usually happens either because the nerves in the low back are irritated or the sciatic nerve maybe down in the buttock region. Um, so in either of those cases, people often say, oh, it goes down the back of my thigh. It might even go down into their calf, their shin, and into their foot. All of these areas where the branches of the sciatic nerve travel. So it's a traveling pain. The technical term for this is radicular pain or radiculopathy. If you have something like the median nerve, which goes to the carpal tunnel, that nerve begins in the neck. So you could have a disc herniation in your neck something causing stenosis in your neck, uh, disc degeneration, any of those issues in the neck could irritate one of the nerve roots that becomes the median nerve. And then in that situation, the person could have traveling pain that goes down their arm through the median nerve distribution. So those are that's kind of the quickest way to be able to tell. Nerve pains are usually pretty easy to tell. It's like numbness and tingling usually just happen with nerve pains, and it has that traveling type quality. So they're usually a little easier to pick up. Most people are are pretty familiar with these symptoms, and if they have something like a sciatic or a carpal tunnel, most people are pretty aware right away that it's related to a nerve. So that's a little bit easier. The last category is chronic, or the term we use more often now is persistent pain. And this is pain that has lasted, the definition for it is past three months. Now, you have to be careful there and look at the other characteristics. You don't want to just think if you have a pain that's been longer than three months that you automatically have chronic pain. There are a lot of mechanical pains that can get flared up and last for many months, even up to a year. I mean, I've personally had several of these where I just kept irritating it. I often don't take my own advice, and I just kept irritating the issue and so it, it wasn't that it was a chronic pain. It was just a mechanical pain that had been around for a long time. But one of the things we noticed with mechanic or with chronic pain is that it often lasts longer than three to six months. And what happens there is that I said before, most tissues in the body heal within three to six months. So if something of a pain is lasting longer than that, we have to start thinking about, is this a chronic or persistent pain, which essentially is a problem occurring in the pain branch of our nervous system. So our pain system is no longer giving us accurate information about what's happening in the body. Essentially, people with chronic pain are experiencing pain when nothing is actually injured or damaged in their body. And so that pain report isn't really helpful and that's not accurate. And so you might think of things like fibromyalgia. There are lots of different chronic pain disorders. We have um, There's chronic cancer-related pain. There's chronic pain that happens after surgeries and traumas. There's chronic, just general chronic musculoskeletal pain. There's chronic headache-related pain. There's a bunch of categories. If you search this, you know, five or six categories that fit into the chronic pain category. And so, again, it's looking at how long has this been around. Usually it's been around for a longer period of time. Chronic pain will also be more vague, and it can spread so mechanical pain is usually very localized to the area where the irritation is occurring. Chronic pain can spread. It can move to different body regions. It won't have really clear-cut borders. So people will just say, ah, oh, it's kind of in this region, but it's hard for them to define. Chronic pain also is not as easy to trigger with mechanical positions and activities. So it, it kind of is unpredictable in that way, uh, which can cause anxiety and fear for people because they don't know what's causing the pain. It's just it's there 
one day and another day it's not there and they can't identify a pattern to what triggers the pain. So that is uh, commonly seen with with chronic pain. So what you really want to be thinking about when you're trying to differentiate between do I have this mechanical kind of tissue-based pain or do I have something that's more chronic is looking at how long has it been around and how easy is it to trigger mechanically, uh, how clear-cut are the borders, because sometimes these things can be a little bit tricky. You know, I've told this story before, but I have a good example of what was a mechanical pain that has become more of a chronic pain myself, and it's a pain I have in my the right side of my back, kind of in my mid-back region. It started as a mechanical pain. It was a, a rib injury I uh, had in jiu-jitsu. So I was at a jiu-jitsu practice, got into a grappling situation that injured that rib. It hurt a lot right in the moment. I heard kind of a popping sound and lost. I was short of breath because it hurt so much. And over the next few weeks, I had a very kind of mechanical rib-based pain. It would hurt if I sneezed, if I took deep breaths, things like that. And it was very localized to that particular rib. I'd felt in the front where the rib attached, and then it'd kind of radiate around the rib to the back side of my spine. Very common mechanical rib symptoms. That eventually kind of calmed down, and I stopped having that. But what ended up happening is that over time, I developed a pain that's only in the right side of my back in line with that rib. You know, this original injury was six years ago. So I still have this pain. And what's unique about it is it is a little more vague. It does kind of always stay in this spot that's maybe the size of a quarter. But what's interesting about it is that it's not really triggered by mechanical movements or positions anymore like it was in the beginning. In the beginning, things like breathing, coughing, sneezing, those would all aggravate it. Nowadays, the thing that turns it on the most is stress. So if I'm stressed about something work-related, it could even be good stress, like maybe I'm about to go on a vacation the next day. It will activate that spot and I will get, you know, uh, pain in that spot in my mid-back. So it's it's taken on a different quality. The quality of the pain is different. It doesn't spread. It kind of stays in the same spot, but it's triggered by non-mechanical things. And that's another really important part to pay attention to. There are a lot of factors that can be associated with pain especially when you get into chronic and persistent pain, it's just less mechanical in many cases. So people will notice that uh, stress triggers their pain, certain thoughts and emotions, maybe um, bouts of depression or anxiety might trigger the pain. It could be uh, tough relationships in their life, work or personal relationships. They'll often notice that there are these other triggers. Maybe a lack of sleep brings on the pain. Um, It could be just uh, times when they're more static and exercising less. So when you're thinking about is this a chronic pain or is it mechanical, that's another part to look at is, is my pain triggered by things that are not purely kind of mechanical force, biomechanical type stress um, type factors? And if that's the case, then you may be be kind of moving more towards that chronic or persistent pain. And these are handled in different ways. The ways that we handle mechanical pains are what most people imagine in physical therapy, a little more specific in terms of if you've injured your Achilles tendon, we're going to give you really specific exercises that challenge and rebuild the capacity of the Achilles tendon. If you have a nerve pain, then you might do really specific nerve mobilization exercises. You might do a sciatic nerve mobilization exercise or a median nerve uh, mobilization exercise if you have carpal tunnel syndrome. Chronic and persistent pain are a little bit different. The exercise still can be very helpful for those, but it's a little more focused on general exercise. It doesn't have to be really specific therapeutic exercises that target one tissue because we're not really thinking about a tissue anymore. We're more so thinking about how can we desensitize the pain system. So if you take something like chronic low back pain, maybe it's somebody who's had low back pain for two years or more, and they uh, it's kind of unpredictable. It's It comes on, you know, they can't always tell what's going to trigger it. There's research out there showing that with chronic low back pain, lots of different interventions have create similar outcomes. So things like even just walking, walking, Pilates, yoga, resistance training, stretching programs, all of these can help with chronic low back pain. And we see this with lots of other chronic pain disorders. Just kind of thinking about general move it, movement, finding things you enjoy, just try not to be static. Our nervous system really benefits from regular movement and addressing all those other factors. So sleep, stress, you have to take a more holistic and sort of comprehensive approach. If you have something that looks more like chronic pain, 
Those elements are, of course, important to pay attention to if you have a mechanical or acute pain, but really important when you get into the chronic pain states. I'll cover all these things in more detail in future episodes. We'll get in and look at specific interventions for mechanical pains, specific interventions for neuropathic nerve pains, and for chronic and persistent pains, but just wanted to give you kind of an overview of the three pain categories. A lot of people aren't aware of these categories. Again, they're just really, most patients are just focused on what specific tissue in my body is causing this pain. Is it a disc herniation? Is it a tendonitis? Is it a muscle strain? But they aren't really aware that there are sort of foundational categories of pain that we want to think about before kind of diving into, is it a specific tissue that we can identify? So I hope this is helpful. Uh, this podcast is evolving. It's brand new. Uh, we've only a few episodes in, so I'd love to get your guys' feedback. We have different types of episodes. You know, I have episodes with Kirsten, uh, other guest interview episodes. We have these solo episodes like today. Some are shorter, some are a little longer. Would love to get your feedback. Is there a particular type of episode you like best? Is it the solo? Is it more of a guest interview? Is there a certain length of time that works best for you? Uh, certain topics you'd like to learn about? Any feedback would really be appreciated. So you can leave a comment here. Um, you can DM me uh, on Instagram, you know, email me. So just reach out and uh, let me know what you think of the podcast. Any feedback is appreciated. I hope you found this episode to be helpful and I will see you the next time. Bye.